What's up, everybody? Chelsea Dinova here. We're going to dissect Formula Drift Orlando's top 32 today. We're also going to go through and show you guys the number one qualifier. Um, that way you can see what everyone's supposed to do in the lead position uh, to be able to do their number one qualifying lap and not play any games and try to pull away. It'll also show you where we can accelerate and decel on the track um, to kind of help with tandem battles later. I'll even sneak in and show you my, guy, my top 32 with uh, Jonathan Castro, where I ended up hitting him, and I'll kind of explain why. Um, kudos to him. He did a fantastic job at this event. Keep an eye out for him. He's turning it up and uh, definitely not playing any games. Just uh, check it out. Enjoy. The FD Orlando track. It is <clears throat> a banked track. Um, it's basically just two turns, but it has a pretty tricky infield and a pretty tricky wall ride. The second half of the track is uh, fairly easy, but um, I'll take you through the sectors here. So on the straightaway here, your first, second, third, fourth gear. Some people are in third. Um, you have three cones here. You want to enter by that last cone. Um, after that, it'll be a deduction. You'll immediately get on the throttle and ride the wall all the way around. <clears throat> Outer zone one here is the entire bank all the way. Um, and I'll show you on the uh, qualifying lap where you need to come off the wall um, but it's all the way basically till the end um, you can do a quick break there and drive into inner clip one after you drive through inner clip one they want you to do a quick transition across the infield to inner clip two on the inside and then you'll track out wide and finish the run all the way out on the outside of the track um, basically putting your back bumper on the bank itself um, and tire can be about six inches from the bank um, so basically a 100 point score is going to be as fast as you can into the first turn, very quick and concise throttle and transition into the uh, first turn. So you have a snappy entry and then riding the wall inches from the wall all the way around um, using just a slight amount of brake or slowing the car with angle to drive into the inner clip, pass inner clip one with a lot of angle, hold that angle for a second, snap a transition and drive into inner clip two. Um, at that point, you'll lock your angle in at interclip 2 and hold it all the way around, holding a super wide line for the whole rest of the track. Something to take note of here, um, the green line here is on throttle zones and the red is uh, a slowdown zone. So, that's, so that everyone understands how the judges um, are viewing it. If you slow down slightly in any of these areas right there, that is okay. It's viewed as a slowdown point of the track. Um, but everywhere else you can or you have to stay on throttle or at least maintain your current speed. All right, so here's your number one qualifier from and Dai Yoshihara. As you can see, he flicks it in at the one and a half cone. Um, the start of the outer zone is there. He snaps to angle quickly. Um, not a ton of angle, but drives up onto the wall. Very smooth amounts of angle. He's pouring more and more on as he's going around the bank. <clears throat> you can see he's inches from the bank all the way around. Almost no wavering all the way around. Comes off the zone, which ends there, and in this section here. Very smooth angle. Perfect on the inner clip there. Transitions very snappy to angle. Again, not a ton of angle, but snaps quickly to it. Into that inner clip, fills that zone, puts his tire right on that yellow line, all the way around the entire run and nicks the last cone and finishes up. So this score was a 95. Watch the replay one more time for you guys. Quick snap into initiation. Almost no steering in the entire bank. Very smooth throughout. Fills the zone, comes off, and then goes ahead and transitions very quickly over the bump. Fills the inner zone or inner clip and then jumps into that outer zone perfectly. Drives all the way around super smooth. So that's going to be your number one qualifier and the score to beat, which is a 95. All right, so I normally don't do top 32, but I did not make top 16, so I will go ahead and do that so you guys can see my run. I know you guys wanted to see it. I get through the chicane, <clears throat> power through, fourth gear, throw it in, snap, quick transition. You can see he's about eight feet off the wall. I'm about three feet off the wall, but he's in a good spot, about a car back on entry. I quickly drive up onto the wall, actually tap the wall, have a small uh, front steering correction. You can see he's about a car length back. I gap him a little bit. He stays inside while I'm pouring on the angle and touching the wall again. 
Um, as you can see through here, he's starting to close the gap because he took a narrower line uh, while I'm running a big qualifying line. I come across the front clip and basically tap the front clip. He's about a car length back again. Snap a transition about a line and a half off of the uh, inner clip there. Castro now about a car and a half back, but closing in. And I fill the run pretty much on the other line. He closes a little bit. So good run, good follow by Castro. And here we go. So I'm going to follow. Castro is going to lead. Goes through the chicane. Throws it in. A little bit of a soft initiation. Um, I'm a lot closer than he is, than I was. Um, as you can see, a big correction here. Um, so I make a correction behind him because I was going to obviously hit him. Um, I power back on. He fills his own, stays off the wall quite a bit. <clears throat> I'm closing the gap here. He gets on the inner clip. This is about the same distance as uh, I was behind him. He's a little bit off on that clip. Quick transition. And as you can see here, oh, I end up hitting him. I try to save it, and so does he. He tries to stay on throttle, but as you can see, his car is broken. I'll give you a quick rewind here. Just uh, watch the smoke coming off the back of his car through that section. So on throttle, lots of smoke through this front inner clip, flicks it. Not really ever gets back on the throttle. So while that is a slowdown point right here, I'll show you guys again. So I'm dialed in, I'm set, I'm driving up under his door. He's not really spinning the tires, he's just off throttle at this point. I'm um, trying to get into inner clip one. I think he made a mistake back here in the line, as you can see. Just watch this transition here. So he, he was going to dive in and hit the clip, so now he's trying to back himself up off throttle. And I'm diving in because historically he was faster here, so I'm doing what I feel like I'm supposed to do. And then I end up just pushing out wide into him and giving him a tap. He does try to save it. He wasn't playing any games. Uh, I think he just made a mistake earlier in the run, which caused the accident there. I end up hitting him. Our car is fine. His car is damaged. But because of that, they deemed him as uh, the winner because I was at fault. But just remember later when you're watching him, uh, the amount of smoke going through there. And you can kind of see how he did make a mistake earlier, which affected his speed through inner clip two. Um, which is where I misjudged and made the mistake. All right, so moving on into the top 16 here, we have Nate Hamilton and Dai Yoshihara. Dai Yoshihara is going to lead, and here we go. And Dai throws it in, super fast initiation, falls off the bank. He's about eight feet off the wall here. Nate is about a car length back. And closing quickly, good job by Nate. He's a little shallow on the uh, line because Dai is on the wall completely. Um, but good job catching up and surpasses the front tires a little bit. But what that does is jam him up. And we'll give you a quick kick back here. He dives in too far. So when Dai tries to drive off the wall, his line just keeps floating out. So you don't want to get yourself in this position. Very close, but way too far on the inside, so you can't drive forward into the clip. Now he has to wait, which is going to cause him to not have the forward grip he needs to drive forward. Um, so right now he's going to be off throttle and float wide. Dai is going to drive in super close on the inner clip there. Again, very close on the inner clip here. Nate's trying to play a quick game of catch-up, but it's a huge gap, huge advantage to Dai Yoshihara. Now they're going to switch places, and Nate Hamilton's going to leave through the chicane. Powers through a Manji entry, very close to the wall, great initiation, but then taps the wall, causing him to slow, has to left foot brake, but he's very far off the outer zone. Dai doing a phenomenal job just being able to stay in there and follow his wonky line. Um, Dai dives in. Obviously, Dai knows he has a huge advantage, but he's still pushing forward to try to close that gap and put on a good show. So obviously I give the win to uh, Dai Yoshihara and uh, Nate Hamilton will have to battle it out another day. So next battle is going to be Dean Kearney and Peter Wysick, which I find or mostly know how to pronounce his name now. All right, so Dean does a flick entry, throws it in. Um, very late entry, um, but gets it in before he needs, uh, gets sideways before the last cone, flicks in. 
You can see he's closing the gap to the wall. Peter doing a great job, but having some mistakes behind him. His car is pretty gripped up, as you can see. So he's wobbling left and right, um, trying to stay on his door because Dean is holding him back. Good positioning coming off inner, uh, the outer zone one, but drives straight as uh, Dean hits the clip. So that's going to be a huge deduction on Peter. You can see Peter's just car is just way too gripped up, bobbling all over the place, uh, having a hard time following, and then spins at the last second. Dean does a spin out there. No, I don't want to update. All right, <clears throat> so it looks like uh, Pedor is at fault for that, and they're allowing him, uh, Dean to fix his car, so we'll have to come back to that battle later. And James Dean is going to lead Jonathan Castro. Uh, again, like I said, just watch that on throttle uh, during the second inner clip, and we'll see how he does on his lead run. Um, James Dean throws it in, very fast entry, and Castro is right there on him. Look at this positioning, amazing. Three feet between the two cars, and Castro is barely wavering, very, very close. Falls back a little bit there. You can see now all of a sudden there's a two-car gap in length, um, and Castro is diving in again on the inside to try to close this. Um, he's working it, and he does close it towards the end. Decent lead run by Dean. Not amazing, but a good lead run. Castro dives in first play in the lead position now. Throws it in. Better entry than Dean. Up on the wall. Leaving a gap to Dean. This is about a car width right there. Filling that zone. Tons of throttle. Great drive by Castro. Right on that inner clip. Front tire touching the, touching the uh, yellow line. Uh, James Dean is closer through this section, um, as you can see, and then full throttle commitment through there with Castro, note that later, um, and then James Dean diving in on the inside, very, very close run here, very good, um, Castro could have been wider there, you know, I, I gotta go one more time with this battle, uh, I think that Castro had a better lead run, um, but James had a overall better follow run but Castro had a better follow run of the bank which is heavy, heavily waved or heavily scored so let's see one more time one more time so let's go one more time I agree with that call alright so Essa and Chris stops battle of the E46's Essa's gonna lead first Essa has a much looser setup than Chris Stops. Even though the same car, same um, tire, Essa has a little bit more power, but uh, Chris Stops has the V8. Essa throws it in on the wall. Fantastic entry. Literally latches on the whole bank. No wavering. I'd like to see a little bit more angle, but the line is ridiculous. Pours on some angle at the end. Chris Stops doing a phenomenal job staying right there on his door. Ooh, and gets gapped and lost in the smoke. Essa smokes Chris stops out. Essa's way off on this outer zone here. Needs to get out wider. Stays pretty far off. Um, Chris stops getting lost, and that smoke's going to be a big hurt on his part. We'll switch positions. Let's see here. Throws it in. Good entry by Chris stops. Not as good as Essa's. Chris stops starts pulling away. Tons of angle leaving outer zone one. Super fast. Perfect on interclip two one. Right on interclip two, great lead run by oh, and puts looks like two tires off in that last section. I gotta give this one to Essa, um, just because he had a better lead run, and Kristaps made a huge mistake stake in his follow run as well as his lead run, putting two tires off. Goes to Michael Essa. All right. So back to the James Dean, Jonathan Castro, one more time. James gets through the chicane. Look at this entry. Castro is pushing him down the straightaway. A little bit of a weak entry from James Dean, but drives right up on the wall. Look at Castro. Look how good this is. So close. Amazing. Oh my goodness. Putting Donies on his door. Right on the inner clip, Castro drives through, transitions, dives right back into the inside, literally putting his tire on this door. This is a textbook follow run. This is exactly what you want. Castro did a phenomenal drive out of that run. 
I don't know how you're going to beat that, James. You're going to have to try, try really hard. All right, so Castro throws it in. Has a little bit of a wonky entry again. It looks like he's got so much grip that he's not able to enter that turn. This is not a good look for Castro. Pretty far off the wall. James right there on him. James doing an amazing job following. Super, super close, even with that mistake. Really, really close to there. Right on that inner clip. Nicks it with the bumper. James dives in on the inside. Super close. Right there on his door. And then Castro pulls him a little bit in that last section. <sighs> this is a tough call. I, personally, I think that uh, it should be another one more time. I think that Castro had a weak entry, um, but had an amazing, the best follow I saw. A better follow than James Dean. So I do believe James had a better lead run, while Castro had the better follow. So however they're going to weigh that. But I would say this is going to be a one more time again, or go to Castro. Oh, goes to Castro. That's pretty awesome. Good for Castro. Stoked for him. Um, I think that he just did an amazing drive. That that follow was was the best I've seen so far out of him and maybe out of many others. All right, so here we go. Osbo and Matt Field. Osbo chucks it in right on the wall. Super gnarly angle. Falls out, has a little bit of a waiver while Matt just drives right up on his door here. Matt's in a great position here. A little bounce. Oh, so he drives straight for a second. Well, Osbo's having an amazing lead run. You can see Matt dragging his bumper and falling off. Looks like he may have lost a tire there. Does complete the run. It will be a scored run. And it looks like a DBD is not going to get a second run. So Osbo is going to do his parade lap. Snappy entry. Falls off the wall but then drives back up. Typical Osbo for this track. Insane amounts of angle. Right on that inner clip. Snaps in. Drives up. Good angle, right into the inner clip. Drives through the whole rest of the last turn at lots of angle. That was an amazing run. I think that would have been a low 90s score for sure. Obviously, it's going to go to Frederick Osbo. <clears throat> All right, moving on to the next one is going to be the rerun of Peter Weisick, or Weisick and Dean Kearney. We have Peter entering. Snappy entry, but stays off the wall quite a bit and then drives up to it. While Dean is following in behind. Oh, and Pedor grabs the wall, almost drives straight, has a huge mistake. Dean goes for the pass on the inside because he was clearly four tires off. Dean puts a tire off, but that doesn't seem to phase him. Peter just jumping in for the show and doing a good follow. Good sportsmanship. Obviously, this battle is going to go one more time because Dean spun out on the first one and Pedor got the wall in the second one. All right, so here we go into the next battle. Cameron Moore and Alec Honnadale. Alec jumps the start. Cameron drives in. Big flick entry from Cameron. Alec is right there on his door having some waivers with Cameron's lots of angles. A little bit of a slower approach. Alec doing a good job following but having some mistakes. And looks like Cameron Moore loops it and Alec has to drive around him. Luckily, there's no accident there. Looks like there's some smoke coming from his car. I don't know what that is. Um, Alec's going to lead. Cameron's going to follow. And here we go. Alec throws it in. Big flick entry right there out to the wall. Drives up to it. Gets into the wall. Pretty close there. Good lead run. Cameron Moore way back there on the inside trying to cut the line to catch up. Alec pulling away. Cameron diving in. Reducing angle while Alec has tons of angle. Just trying to catch up. Alec is rolling out. Tons of angle across the finish line. This one is definitely going to go to Alec Honnadale. Alright, so Battle of Drift Alliance brothers Ryan Turk and Chris Forsberg. Turk gets the lead run first. And he throws it in with a handbrake entry. Pretty close to the wall. Dives down a little bit, but then gets right back on it. Chris, as you can see here, is lower angle, but trying to play a game of catch-up. And he does. Starts closing the gap there. Very, very close. Turk making tons of smoke. Great, great follow from Chris here. He dives in again, but gets lost in the smoke. Maybe puts two tires off. Dives into the inside while Turk's having a good lead run to try to catch up and doesn't quite do it. Definitely uh, 
Going to need Chris to do an amazing lead run to make up for that big mistake. Throws it in. Gets about four feet off the wall. Drives up. Similar line to Turek. Around a lot of left foot break. You can see there. Comes off the wall a little bit early. Maybe trying to get some speed to gap Turek. But he is not phased. Right there on him. Drives to the inside zone there. About a car and a half gap here. Um, and Turek starts... Oh, actually, Ryan gets gapped at the last second. So... This one's definitely going to go, like I said, to Ryan Turk. Chris had a huge mistake in turn number two, right after the inner clip two. Um, so it's definitely going to go to <coughs> Turk on that one. All right, so it looks like it's going to be a no-show for Peter. So uh, Dean Kearney is going to get the win. I'll skip forward. Here we go, throws it into the wall, lots of left foot brake, the entire bank and the front tire locked up. Into the inner clip, looks like he gripped it up a bit here uh, for this run, and off that inner clip too, but fills the outer zone pretty well, about two feet off, I'd like to see him a little bit wider, but fills it towards the end, and good run from Dean, probably a mid-80s run. All right, so now we have Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Kyle Mohan, Vaughn's going to lead first and drive through the chicane. And leave Kyle Mohan in the dust. Throws it in about three feet off the wall there. Drives up. Gets all the way up on the wall. Lower angle. Starts pouring it on towards the end. Couldn't see if he filled that zone. But gets into that inner clip. Great. Drives across into inner clip two. Super fast transition on throttle early. Way off on this outer zone there in the beginning. Uh, but then finishes on the wall on the line as Kyle Mohan spins. <coughs> Kyle Mohan's going to lead. And... Vaughn's going to chase. Kyle Mohan gets the hit. Oh, Nick's a cone. Looks like it's going to be a restart. And Vaughn is drifting by him. <laughs> I just want to drift, man. Oh, and he shuts it down. Looks like uh, he will not be allowed to change tires, so this could be interesting. Especially with this track, tire consumption is a huge problem. Two laps is very difficult. All right, so here we go for the rerun. Kyle gets through and initiates on the wall, then dives down a little bit, stays about five feet off the wall all the way around while Vaughn is following. Right on that inner clip and right on inner clip two. Hopefully Vaughn can dive in. Oh, two tires off for Kyle. This looks like kind of an inactive chase here, but uh, Kyle's made a lot of mistakes. I don't think they're going to look at the inactive chase. It's going to go to Vaughn. Alrighty. Oh. That was it. I guess I need to figure this out. Hold on one second. Alright, on to the great eight with a battle of Dean Kearney and Dai Oshihara. You can see Dean's got the hit hard here. Jumps the light. Ends up having to wait for Dai. And Dai tosses it in about four feet off the wall. Dean is right there on him. Fantastic proximity, great angle, not a lot of bobbling or wavering from Dean, but I'll give you guys a hint here. As you can see, he's diving down to the inside towards the end of the turn, right here, and it's not giving, he's not driving in as, as Dai is going to be, so he's going to get left here. Just because of the line, bam, two car gap, just because of the line. Great inner clip one, has a little bit of a mistake there. Um, not coming on to power for inner clip two, which throws Dean off. That's an interesting one. I haven't seen that. Um, on power through the last turn, Dean gets gapped by about four cars. Um, great job by Dean. I do think Dai gave him the juke a little bit there. Maybe not on purpose, just made a mistake. Couldn't light the turbo off or something, but that Dai was uh, uncharacteristic through that middle section. All right, um, Dean tosses it in about five feet off the wall, then immediately gets right up on the wall, super close. Um, good wall right. Oh, rips the wing off while Dean is waiting there, or uh, Dai is waiting there, and hits the inner clip, dives in. Big mistake on Dai's half right there as well, and Dean is going to leave him in the dust right here. This is a really tough call. I would go one more time. I think that... Uh, Die made a mistake in the lead run, and I think that that caused Dean to have a mistake. And then on the follow, I think Die had a few small mistakes there, while Dean had a pretty good lead run. So I would go one more time here. 
it's unanimously going to die Yoshihara. I guess they didn't view that uh, mid that infield uh, mistake on die. All right, so Essa throws it in versus Castro right on that wall again. Smash up on it. Castro in his door. A couple little waivers there, uh, but not a big deal. Inner clip one, not even a car length back. Gets, ooh, phased off in the smoke again with Essa. Essa rolling cold throughout the entire track. Castro tightens it up at the end and catches him, but Essa could have been wider in that last section. Um, Essa's big uh, claim to fame here is going to be that early transition and a lot of throttle to make a lot of smoke through inner clip one, two, I mean. Good initiation by Castro. Uh, those are getting rare for him here. Uh, gets right up on that wall. Essa gets in a little bit of a pocket there. Gets Falls back about a car length. Castro diving in, pulling away on this last uh, turn quite a bit. And uh, I couldn't see in the smoke if Castro put a tire off or had a mistake. So at this point, I would give it to Castro. But I don't know if he went off at interclip two. So it could either be one more time or go to Essa. I mean, depending on how they view that, I don't have another camera angle. Uh, strictly off of this, I'd give it to Castro. But uh, I just don't know what they're going to think about that interclip two which obviously they weighed pretty heavily um, that he was offline and maybe even put a tire or two off. All right, so then our next battle is going to be Frederick Osbo and Alec Honnadale. Um Osbo throws it in right up on the wall, super close. Uh, Alec is following behind. Alec dives in on the inside, but that phases him a little bit and gets him pushed back and thrown offline for interclip two. Has to make a waiver there to get around, and Osbo just gaps him. We'll give a little rewind there because I can explain it a little bit better. Um, Alec is trying to play catch up, so he's picking up speed, but right here, Frederick makes his change to drive down off the bank, um, and Alec is still charging. So that dives him in with a lot of angle, which while this is matched in great positioning, his car is being pushed this way while Osbo is driving off the bank already. And that makes a mistake, pushes him offline, and he has to bobble to get around interclip two. Huge advantage goes to Frederick Osbo on this one, even though Alec was uh, pushing pretty hard there, just a little bit too hard. All right, Alec's going to lead, and Osbo's going to chase. Alec better put an insane lead run down. Let's see here. Boom, big gangster flick, latches onto the wall, hits the wall, ends up driving way down off the bank because of that. Huge mistake again on Alex's part. While well, Osbo's on autopilot behind him, just cruising, waiting for him to make more make more mistakes. And uh, it looks like Osbo's going to definitely get the win on this one. I'm going to skip through this because we already know. There you go. All right, another DA battle of Ryan Turk and Von Gittin. Turk's going to lead first. Turk throws it in. Good initiation, about three feet off. Von's about a car back. Would like to see him a lot closer. Has to dive down and take away some angle and line to get up on him, but does. Goes through interclip one in a good position. One car back. Dives to the inside. About a car and a half back. Ooh, Turk puts two tires off right there. We'll just do a little replay. He misses interclip two by a lot. Two tires off, catches the cone while Vaughn is sitting waiting. That is good news for Vaughn because Vaughn got gapped a little bit right there. So it'll be close to see um, how Vaughn's lead run is in Turk in the chase. Vaughn throws it in very, very quickly. Turk is inside of the car, insanely. Uh, diving in off the bank. Looks like he's slowly driving up to the bank, but stays about three feet off, pouring lots of angle. Turk is sitting there waiting. And then makes a transition. Turk di dives back and dives back up on again. Has no problem driving right up onto his door and staying right there on the second half of the track. Um, amazing job by Turk, but I just don't think it's going to overpower those two tires off. So I'm going to have to give it to Vaughn. Oh, it's going again. I guess maybe it wasn't two tires off, or it wasn't enough of two tires off. All right, Ryan Turk throws it in. A little bit of a weak initiation, but uh, Vaughn is right there on him where he needs to be. A little lower line, but uh, not having any problems keeping up, staying around his door. Uh, through interclip one, uh, 
Turk is about one hash, t hash line off. Vaughn drives right up onto his door, super close to that section. A little bit of a shallower line, but is able to stay right on this door through the second half of the track where Turek seemed to shine in the earlier run. All right, so Vaughn hits a cone, and they shut down. It's going to be a restart. All right, and Vaughn is going to launch and go through the chicane, hopefully this time smoothly. Gets through there well, throws it in. Good initiation, but not quite as close to the wall as I'd like to see. But leaving Turek in the dust, good angle from, from Vaughn. Drives through inner clip one, a little off on inner clip one. We'd like to see him tighter, also leaving the door open for Turek. Um, gets perfect on that clip, and Turek bows out and breaks and drives right off track. And that's going to give Vaughn the win. Uh, I don't know if Turek broke something or what, but that's uh, definitely going to be a win for him. All right, moving on into the final four, we have uh, Dai Yoshihara and Michael Essa. Um, Essa's been making that smoke train all weekend with a little bit of looser car. Dai's been gripped up, uh, number one qualifier. It should be a good battle. Let's see if uh, Essa turns it up at all. Looks like uh, Dai throws it in. Good entry. Uh, great entry by Essa right there on him. Very, very tight car now all of a sudden. Um, through inner clip one, Dai is right on it. Essa is even taking it out. Almost clips him in the back. Uh, Essa diving into the inside, leaving about a car gap there for the last turn. And diving in, trying to close the gap, but Dai moving pretty quick through that last section. All right, so Essa's car looks gripped up. Let's see if he can uh, manage to do a good qualifying run. Gets on the bank, rides the wall, a little bit less angle than normal. Lots of left foot brake to keep him up there. Gets on the wall at the exit of the turn, drives into inner clip one. A little bit off on that inner clip. Oh, knocks the bumper off. Dies about two cars back right here and powering on, trying to get back to his door. Having some trouble here, but slowly reaches in and gets to his door. Um, I think Essa had a better lead run than Die, but uh, I don't know. I gotta give it to Die. I mean, I'm sorry. I gotta give it to, to Essa. There it is. Goes to Essa. Die's gonna get third place due to his qualifying. Um, so the higher qualifier out of the third and fourth battle, they don't actually battle. It's just a higher qualifier gets a position. All right, Vaughn getting junior, Frederick Osbo. Osbo throws it in, tons of angle, but not quite up as far up on the bank. Uh, Vaughn's about a car and a half back, but closing. Lots of left of breaking from uh, Osbo. Vaughn staying shallow uh, to try to keep proximity. Gets rolled out on a little bit through the inner clip. Almost uh, hits the inner clip because he's trying to work his car to get it around it. And Osbo just freight trains through the last turn and pulls on him quite a bit. All right, so the lead run here is going to be Vaughn versus Osbo. Vaughn leaves the line, gets through the chicane. Osbo following. Great initiation by Vaughn, but Osbo is right there on. Vaughn is on the wall, literally scraping the wall. Osbo is literally scraping him, sitting there waiting. A little bit of a bobble from Osbo there. But Osbo has no problem just driving right up into his door while Vaughn is sitting there literally full lock through the whole last turn and Osbo is right there on him without any issues. Definitely going to go to Osbo with this one. Uh, Vaughn had a, not nearly as good of a chase. Frederick Osbo gets the win. So I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, Orlando dissecting. I'm going to jump right in and shoot some from Atlanta right now. So keep an eye out for that on the channel. should be up in the next day or two. And uh, thanks for watching. Uh, you know, I know I've been a little bit in the dark with all this stuff because I had a broken laptop. But it's uh, all fixed up now. And uh, hopefully we can uh, keep pumping out some content for you guys to watch. And, uh, you know, I mainly do this just to uh, be able to educate you guys so that you guys can understand how difficult it is to be a judge um, and also how difficult it is to judge our sport. While we're not necessarily a timed sport and we're not necessarily a sport that, uh, a motorsport that is definitive on who is the winner, um, you know, you gotta, sometimes the calls are on your side and sometimes they're not. You know, hopefully it evens out and uh, when you know, when you have a bad call, you get a good call after it. So, you know, it's uh, definitely difficult of a sport to judge, and uh, you can see all the little discrepancies. You can see that with all the smoke that everybody's making, the judges have an even more difficult time to be able to see if anyone's making mistakes. Um, the cars are so drastically different now 
You have cars that have a lot of sideways grip, where some have a lot of forward grip, and it makes cars bobble and have difficulty following. So, you know, just trying to move forward and progress the sport by educating you guys. And uh, if you have any questions, drop them in the box below, and I will do my best to answer them. Um, I do that weekly, so sometimes it might take a few days. But if you have a valid question uh, or comment, I will get to you, man. Thanks, guys.